Hi there, this is Bob Martin with RCSub.com and the Nautilus Dry Docks, and I wanted to take a few minutes to share with you my latest build. Uh, this is a 40 inch long Nautilus model uh, based on the Disney movie. It is, uh, uh, as far as I know, a, a one off model built by a modeler out of Germany. It's certainly the only example that I've seen of this model. It's a, it's a great size and you can see the difference in size between the 31 inch offering from the NautilusDryDocks.com and of course the big 66 inch model that we offer as well. It's a, it's a great size. It was really good for uh, remote control which is actually what this model is. So I'm going to take a few minutes give you a little tour of the model, how it was all uh, put together, and uh, a little later on we'll throw it in the water and we'll see how it does. Alright, this model was built as a surface running RC model. Um, I have a scratch built display case that, uh, or sorry, display stand that actually utilizes a piece of the EFX Nautilus that I had lying around. You can see the really great detail on the hull. All of the rivets and panel lines are in place. All of the hatches. A few little areas that uh, are lacking in, in some of the other detail, like the, uh, the skiff cover, for example. But, uh, you know, really a beautiful, beautiful model. And like I said, I really like the uh, size, even though it's not a, a standard modeling scale. All right, let's take a look uh, inside the model. I'll show you how it's all put together. This is the uh, six channel radio system. Now, six is complete overkill for this model because I'm only using two. But what that does is it allows for the owner to expand the model, uh, you know, potentially run lighting or other features off of uh, different channels. Uh, and the way that I have it set up, you know, it's quite possible that uh, he could convert it over to a static diving model in the future if he so chooses. To get into the model, uh, it's the sort of the standard hull split that I typically use for RC models. The ram forms the securing pin. You simply slide that out. And everything comes apart. Now I apologize because I haven't yet at this point sort of cleaned up the, uh, the lower hull to make it look uh, a little tidier. But uh, you can see the general layout. We've got some flotation foam in here, um, a little bit of ballast weight that will get secured down. Forward battery compartment. This is the uh, power conduit that runs to the rear drive section. And that houses your uh, rudder servo, speed controller, and uh, the receiver as well as the main drive battery or sorry drive motor here's our prop shaft geared prop shaft and uh, linkage for the rudder looking to the rear you can see big beefy seven bladed scimitar propeller and that was done obviously it's not the stock propeller uh, from the movie but uh, this one is designed more for performance and uh, it actually offers a lot of thrust for this model that uh, gives the owner again the option to really get up to speed if he wants to. You can see the rudder linkage is run through one of the um, struts here and is connected here. There is some clear plastic and that's completely removable. Um, what I like to do is, even with RC models, because just they, they are so beautiful, is to make it so that the owners can display it as a static model if they want to as well. So this is removable to give it a little bit more uh, scale appearance when it's not in the pond. So to gain access to, you know, for maintenance uh, or for charging, basically it's four screws. This is just gasket material. 
and it's kept greased and it, it uh, basically seals everything up. So this is a completely watertight compartment. The entire model can be pushed all the way down to the bottom of a pool. Uh, that's certainly not an issue at all. The prop shaft seal is actually, this idea was taken from the Engle RC subs uh, and it's a bit of silicone tubing that's run uh, over some brass tubing and then the, the, the shaft. So it seals in there and it's only about three millimeters that it overlaps but it works exceptionally well. The angle systems uh, pressurize up their watertight compartments due to the ballast system so uh, these seals are actually designed to hold quite a bit of, uh, of pressure. These are twin uh, LiPo batteries. They're each 1300 um, milliamp hour, so we got a total of 2.6 amps, which should be plenty of time uh, for this model to uh, cruise about the pond. All right, let's take a quick look at the inside of the upper hull. You can see I've got a ton of flotation foam, and it's basically taking up every square inch of the upper hull and uh, the reason for that is that I got a little bit overly ambitious with uh, ballasting the lower hull so there's actually uh, quite a bit of weight in there so as a result I needed to put a lot of foam in the upper hull but the advantage to that um, and what I was actually shooting for is a lot of static stability in the model so that that big prop when it's given a lot of power doesn't twist the model over sideways which is certainly an issue with um, you know any RC model with a single prop on the center line so again it the the foam high the weight low gives a writing moment to the model and allows it to stay on a more even keel under power the center section is actually a fully detailed salon interior and it's, com it's removable. Uh, two screws and the entire assembly slips out for maintenance. Uh, the interior details include the uh, settee couches, the curved couches, a specimen table, uh, carpets. So it's, it's a beautiful interior. Again, for a static display, it should be absolutely beautiful. Looking up to the front, you can see a small orange compartment. And this is actually the um, lighting system power. And the reason I did that is, is so that, again, the owner doesn't need to power up the entire model in order to show it uh, with the lights on. So this is simply a 9-volt uh, a battery inside a watertight housing. So in order to display the model with the lights on, all you need to do is grab the lighting lead and connect it to power. Push our housing back in there, it secures down with Velcro, and there you go. You can see that we've got a full lighting system inside to the wheelhouse. There's some green lights, there's some white lights, all of the alligator eyes are lit, and of course the uh, salon has three LEDs in there as well so that you can see what's going on inside. Uh, at the back there's also a skiff light and again that, that'll help for navigation if the owner decides to go for a little bit of a of a nighttime cruise with the model. Alright, in order to get going with the model it's, uh, it's really simple, it's really just uh, throw it in the water and go. Turn on our transmitter, uh, main power switch on the side of the unit is uh, right here. So we're going to take a look inside, we're going to wiggle our rudder here for you. You can see it operating inside the compartment. Got a bellows seal right here that seals the water from the inside. And of course the actual rudder itself. And then we've got uh, our throttle control. 
Very, very smooth. You can always tell, uh, you know, a really good drivetrain by how slow it can spin. Um, that means that there's very little binding and that the speed controller is of, uh, of fairly high quality. So you can actually see, uh, in this particular case, you can get very, very slow with this drivetrain, nice and smooth, all the way through its full range of speed. Well, there you have it. This is, uh, again, latest build, 48-inch, or 40-inch uh, Disney Nautilus model. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, keep an eye on my channel for more exciting projects, uh, including this 66-inch static build-up, uh, step-by-step, if you ever want to see what goes into building one of the bigger models. Thanks again, and we'll see you around.